Guys, what's happening? My name's Pete. Welcome back to yet another video on the channel. In today's video, I want to chat to you guys about rangefinders. Now, it can be a very, very intimidating process to buy a rangefinder. And obviously, this is a long-term purchase, so you want to make sure you buy the right thing the first time so that you don't end up in a situation where your equipment is not working for you or it's not working to sort of the level you expect it to. Now, obviously, with stuff like this, consumer electronics, outdoor electronics, there's gonna be some marketing mumbo jumbo. So today I wanna give you guys some information, some tools if you will, to help you make your decision for your next rangefinder. Now, first things first, the rangefinder I personally use is a handheld monocular. Now I use the Razer 4000, which is behind me. This guy over here. This is from Vortex Optics, full disclosure, I'm sponsored by Vortex, so all the rangefinders we're gonna be looking at are from Vortex Optics today. Now this thing, I have absolutely annihilated and it is still going strong. Now, speaking of Vortex, just by the way, you guys will see the clock is running again. A bunch of you noticed that in my last video that the clock stopped. So thank you for being so observant. And clearly I'm not very entertaining if you're checking around in the background. Now, the Razer 4000, okay, is the 4000, the number, especially in Vortex's lineup, the 4000 is how much yardage it's rated for. Also comes with this sort of handy hard case, which, I pretty much never use. So the rule of thumb here with any yardage advertised on a rangefinder, this is gonna be best case scenario, okay. Optimal environmental conditions, no rain, no snow, no dust, no, you know, into the sun. And they're gonna be ranging, you know, a freaking giant target, okay. They're gonna be ranging the side of a mountain or a truck or something like that. And when I say they, this is generally uh, this is a, a bit of a veralgemening, okay, generalization. Veralgemening is going to be our Afrikaans word of the day. Now, your ability for your, or your rangefinder's ability rather, is going to be very much limited to how still you can hold it, okay. So if you don't get the desired results, chances are you're moving about. Because if you think about how the technology works, it shoots a laser out the bottom here. It, that laser has to reflect off something and make its way back into your rangefinder. Now this all happens in fractions of a second, but if you're wobbling about, you're missing that beam that's coming back. So that's very important. Now there's a few things you can do to help that. So with us, what we do with long range shooting is we generally take a tripod or something like that and you can actually rest your rangefinder. You don't have to clip it in, but you can just rest it like this if you have a sandbag of sorts. By the way, this is a new little prototype bag I'm working on, but oftentimes at precision rifle matches, I'll just pop a bag down I'll pop my rangefinder on the top and I'll range targets like that. What you could also do is, you know, put a little Arca mount on the bottom and then you can just clip that into your Arca compatible tripod and now all of a sudden that rangefinder isn't going anywhere. And this is gonna lock it off essentially and make it much more steady for you to get accurate ranges and basically eliminate that wobble. So you could literally line it up, push the button, and you're gonna give it the best possible chances of giving you an accurate reading. If you're hunting, this is obviously not practical, but generally when you're hunting, you're not trying to range something on the limit of your range finder because you would be a little bit closer, right? Maybe what you wanna do is range across a mountain or something and determine how long it's gonna take you to walk around to make a put together a stalk or something like that. So that's something to consider. Now, as I said, this one, I'll show you guys some close-ups of it. I've absolutely wrecked it and it's still going strong. You know, I was hunting a few years ago in the Karua when this just came out and you know, the animal sort of moved around me and as I turned, I literally pushed it into the sand and like turned my entire body weight on this thing and you can see it on it, but it's, you know, it's still going strong. As long as you keep it sort of clean, then you're good to go. Now, what are some of the other things you need to look for? Let me grab the next model and I'll show you guys some sort of little value add things that are quite nice. Okay, real quick. We recently launched tuners. These fit on your Raptor muzzle brakes and they're absolutely badass. Link down below. Now, here we have the Diamondback HD2000. This is brand new for the guys in South Africa. This is not here yet, but this is gonna be sort of the budget option. Now, if you think about the Vortex lineup, same thing with the scopes. You're gonna have Diamondback sort of at the bottom of the range, entry level range finders. They've just come out with the Viper, which you guys can see over there, and then you're gonna go to the Razor. Makes me think if they'll come out with a Strike Eagle model, perhaps. Um, fun fact, a lot of the products in Vortex's lineup are named after planes. Now, what's cool is, as with 
the Razer 4000, you get a little carry pouch. Now, because this is more budget orientated, okay, it doesn't necessarily make it a bad option. It just doesn't have the best of the best electronics and the best glass and those kind of things. Your, even your little carry pouch is a little bit more budget friendly. But what I like about this, it's got a little belt loop, so you can just hook it onto your belt and you've got it with you. And you have a basically a silent deploy mechanism with this little, you know, sort of paracord in there. So you can access it without having to operate a zipper, which could, you know, scare away the animal you're after or frighten the target you're about to shoot. Right, I've already used this, but I did put it back in the plastic. And earlier today I was ranging into the sun and I was getting 1,550 meters off this and it's rated for 2,000 yards. Again, I was ranging a house. Okay, so it's a big target. But I had no problem ranging like small bushes and stuff like that at about five, 600 meters, which is on the limit of where I personally would be hunting. So this is gonna be awesome for that. I haven't yet spent much time with the Viper 3000, so it's a rated a little bit further. And that brings us to sort of, you know, the next thing we need to chat about. Generally, what I recommend to guys when buying a rangefinder, you wanna determine what you wanna use it for, number one. If you're gonna be a bow hunter, this is gonna be perfect for you because you do not need to range something at 2,000 yards, you know. If you're gonna be doing ELR shooting, you wanna buy the best possible thing you can get. If you know you're sort of in the journey of the sport and you're gonna be in the sport for the long term, I would recommend getting the best range finder money can buy because that's gonna buy you margin for error. Now, why do you need that? Again, as I said earlier, the marketing teams give you best case scenario. Now, if you have a higher end range finder and all of a sudden you need to, you know, range an animal at 500 meters, in suboptimal conditions, the better rangefinder you purchased initially, the better your chances are gonna be of having an accurate range. What I really like about the Razer 4000, it's got other built-in features, such as first or last target mode, which I find very, very useful, especially in a competition scene. When we're shooting targets at, you know, a thousand meters beyond, it's sometimes very difficult to determine if you're actually ranging the target or are you ranging the terrain behind the target. So you can actually set this up where it shows I'm ranging the closest thing to me in the sort of ranging reticle or you can range the furthest target as you guys would have seen in that graphics that I just overlaid courtesy of Vortex. They're way better at explaining things than I am. So that's what I would recommend. Get the best thing that you can afford that'll serve you well long term. Then in terms of brands, there are so many good brands out there. Obviously, I'd be very biased to get a Vortex one. As I said, I've trashed this and I know one day when I eventually do break it because at the rate that I'm <laughs> using it and it's um, you know keeping up with the abuse so far. But if I do break it, I've got that lifetime, no questions asked Vortex VIP warranty, which is phenomenal. So that's why I kind of lean towards that brand. And long before they were a sponsor of myself for shooting or hunting or whatever the case, I was a customer because of that warranty, because our rifles and our things, if you think about it, is actually a very simple piece of equipment. Your triggers may be a little bit complex, but the rest of it is pretty simple. But as soon as you start going into electronics and optics and things like that, if something's gonna go wrong, it's likely gonna be in that department. So that's always something in the back of my head. Anyway, guys, I hope that helps you make a decision for you know selecting a rangefinder. Know that the yardage they give you is gonna be a best case scenario thing. Try and stretch your budget a little bit and buy yourself margin for error where you, you know, if you're in a suboptimal condition that your rangefinder will still perform well. It's always very interesting for me when we go to these matches and we see different brands, how, you know, we sort of sometimes get the same reading, but this guy's got a, you know, a Leica, I've got a Vortex, and this guy's got a Leopold or whatever the case may be and we're sort of all ranging at the same targets and using different features built into rangefinders. Most of the rangefinders all have the, you know, angle compensation, the horizontal compensated distance. If you're using a ballistic solver, like something like Strolock, I would just use line of sight, so LOS, that's the abbreviation in these at least. You use that because you're gonna be putting that shooting angle into your ballistic solver anyway in a target shooting environment. If it's hunting and it's sort of snapshots, then perhaps you can go 8CD on the settings on this. So I have a little story to share with you guys. Earlier this year at the Gundy's in Texas, I was driving back with John and the team from Warrior Poet Society and this is late at night, like 10 o'clock at night, and we're driving and on the way back, a couple of the guys says, they're a little bit hungry, let's get Taco Bell, right? So we're going through the drive-through, John and I are sitting in the back talking about guns, entrepreneurship, fellowship, and all of those sort of things. 
And we're having a great time. And as we sort of pull into the driveway, I, for the life of Evan was sitting in the front passenger seat. I can't remember the gentleman's name who was driving, but it was so funny because when we were ordering and it came to like what, what, what John wants to order, he says he wants a, I think it was something like a half, a Texas half shell. Okay, this item is not on the menu, but the gentleman placing the order in the driver's seat, he doesn't know this. And the more he says like, I don't see it on the thing, John's like, no man, it's on the, you know, on the top right of the big screen with a million items on. And obviously the guy doesn't see it because it's like a little bit of time pressure. And he's trying to place this, you know, Texas half shell order with the lady at the, on the intercom. It was hilarious. And, you know, it took him like two minutes to figure out John was pulling at his leg, but seeing the sense of humor and how they operate. And it's obviously quite evident if you guys watch, you know, the Warrior Pro Society, highly recommend that. Great channel, great information. And uh, what you see there with sort of the guys, is literally what you get and for me that's always very refreshing to see because I have met some people that you see this persona and then in real life it's it's sort of not that so that was really cool so that's my story and a little bit of info on rangefinders and I hope you guys enjoyed it thank you very much to modular driven technologies for being the partner of this channel if you're looking for you know badass setups like the one you see behind me or their hunting chassis like the h 26 look no further than MDT tech Dot com. Guys, thank you very much for watching. Again, like, subscribe, comment, all the wonderful things, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.